You can see it came to the top of the landing and it's prohibiting itself from driving any further to fall off the steps. Hey everyone, Digital David here. Today in this video, I'm gonna be checking out the Ecovacs D-Bot NA Pro Plus Robot Vacuum Cleaner and Mop. I did receive this unit to review, but any opinion expressed in this video is strictly my own. That being said, if you're interested in this product, you wanna find out more about it, the link to it will be in the video description. You can see the retail box and packaging right here. Check it out, everything looks great. So this is not only a robot vacuum cleaner and a mop, it also comes with a self emptying base, features LiDAR navigation and 3D vision for better navigation and obstacle avoidance. Now let's go ahead, let's open it up and look at the contents. Here are all the contents. First up, you can see we have our product literature right here. We can learn more about the warranty. This does come with a one year warranty. Then we have our user guide and manual that's very thorough and detailed, walking us through everything we need to know about our RoboVac and the self emptying station that's included all the accessories, how to set up and prepare for cleaning, quick start options. Then you can see they have a free app, the Ecovacs home app for iOS and Android devices, Wi-Fi information, how to operate, use and program your RoboVac for cleaning and mopping, regular maintenance tips and tricks, super thorough, going through all the maintenance tasks for you, for all the different parts and components. Then we have our indicator lights and what each scenario and light means. Then you can see a troubleshooting section, very thorough and detailed, going over possible causes and solutions for you. And then we have some tech specs. And then all the information repeats again in multiple languages. Next up, you can see we have an additional vacuum bag, which is great. There's already one installed in the base. Then we have 10 microfiber mopping pads, our power cord. You can see our mopping module right here with the pad installed. We also have our carpet ramp extension if needed. Our two side cleaning brushes that are color coded for us. Then we have a box that includes the vacuum cleaner. And lastly, we have our self emptying base. Let's go ahead, let's look at the vacuum up close. Here's a look at the vacuum up close. Check it out from the top, everything looks great. We got the Ecovacs logo and branding. That's on top of our LiDAR navigation module. That's how this vacuum is gonna be able to see and sense its surroundings and map your house. We also have a power button right here. You can see we have our True Detect 3D vision. We have the D-Bot branding. We can also open this up following the prompt to reveal five steps for setup right here with our six step prompting us to go to the back. We have a QR code to download the Ecovacs home app for iOS and Android devices. On the back, we have additional steps walking us through that app setup and they have their customer service and contact information if you ever have any questions. Then on the inside of the cover, you can see we have our power button right here so we can flip that on. We have our Wi-Fi button. You can see we also have our handle to remove our dustbin. So just gently pull it out. As you can see, everything looks great. Very small and compact. We have this red button we can press to release this. So if we need to clean our filter, we can do that very easily. We can pull everything out, give it a nice wash and clean following the instructions right there on it. And then we can go ahead, we can put everything back in place. We also have a multi-purpose cleaning tool with nice built-in storage right there. I really like that. And then you can see the cover does not open on the front. It's just this side. Now let's look at it from the side. You can see on the back right here, we have our handle to remove our mopping bin, our water tank. We'll rotate it around. You can see some air exhaust right here. Actually, this is all sealed up, so it's just a design. Then we have our infrared sensors along the front bumper with our 3D vision and additional sensors there. So you can see that. And then on this side, we actually do have some holes in a grill right there, I believe for some air to exhaust out as needed. And then we're back to the water tank. So let's flip it over and we can learn more about the vacuum from the bottom of it. You can see we have where our side cleaning brushes are gonna be installed. They're color coded red and green for you. Our omnidirectional wheel, our charging contacts. We have all of our different cliff sensors so we can sense if it's gonna drive off a ledge, steps, things along those lines that will prevent it from doing so. Then we have our two drive wheels. These are really cool. I'd say they're soft yet durable. It's the best way to describe them. Look at that cool tire tread and design. So they're basically airless tires. And you can see they do have some cushion to them, almost like built-in shock absorbers for the wheels. And obviously we have our spring-loaded suspension. You can see our main cleaning brush right here, easily removable for cleaning and detangling. 
any other maintenance you want to conduct right there. Then we have our flaps. This is going to be so it can self empty so you don't have to remove the dustbin and empty all the dirt. And then you can see the bottom side of what the uh, water tank looks like without the mopping module installed. Now let's go ahead. Let's look at our docking station. Here's a look at the unit from the top. Check it out. We got the Ecovacs logo and branding. We have a textured spot right here. That's a button we can press to open up the top to reveal our vacuum bag already installed for us. Then we can just press that back shut. You can see it from the front right here. Everything looks great. This is where it's going to suck out the contents from our dustbin and auto empty for us. The wheels are going to drive up here on this grooved surface and then rest right in those grooves. We can also see our charging contacts right here, an additional sensor so we can find its way home. Now you can see the nice side profile right here from both sides. And then you can see from the back, we have where our power cable is going to plug into. And then we have some additional cable management options for us. And I like at the bottom, if you can see this on the very bottom, looks like we have a spot cut out that we could, you know, put our power cord in to either run to the left or to the right to keep everything flush if we want it up against the surface like a baseboard or a wall. It's great that they have that built in. That's pretty cool. And then I want to show you the very bottom. You can see we have some nice rubber feet, very soft. Maybe it's more silicone rubbery, but that should hopefully provide some grip and it definitely won't scratch our surfaces or anything like that. And then we have some additional information on the docking station. And you can see down below, we have our two channels right there. So it's gonna suck out and empty the contents for us. We can look in real time to make sure that there's no clogs or anything like that. Now let's go and let's get our vacuum set up. So the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna install our side cleaning brushes right here and they're color coded red to red, green to green. Just gently line them up and snap them in place. So there we go, we got the red one installed. Now we're gonna get the green one installed. And lastly, we have our mopping module right here. This is just gonna gently clip into place. So line it up as you see here and then just gently press in. There we go, we now have that installed. And what's cool about this mopping module, it actually has a little bit of give here. So you can see the wiggle room that we have. So when it's you know on your floor, if maybe there's a change in the level of your floor, that will adjust accordingly to it which is great. So it's not going to be like too high. If it's off the ground, it'll drag behind the vacuum, making sure that it's covering all the surface area that the vacuum is driving over. Now let's go ahead. Let's let this charge up. Now that with the vacuum charged, let's go ahead. Let's set up within the Ecovacs home app. So once you download the app again, it's available for iOS and Android devices for free. You will sign in or create a profile. Then you'll be at this home screen where we're ready to set up our RoboVac. So select the big blue add button. Now we have to choose our maker model. You can see they have a lot of different options here. So in our case, it's the DBot N8 Pro Plus. Now we're prompted to connect to our home Wi-Fi network. Make sure you're connected to a 2.4 gigahertz network. Enter your password, then select next. Next up, you can see we're in the preparation stage where we need to make sure that we have the RoboVac turned on. You can see we have ours in the on position right here. Select next. Now we need to press the reset button for one second. So let's hold that down. Ready for network setup. So we got the prompt, ready for network setup. Select next, confirm that the robot's Wi-Fi indicator is flashing and ready to connect. We do have the flashing light down there, all set. And now we need to connect the robot to your phone. So we have to go to our Wi-Fi settings and select the Ecovacs vacuum right there and then go back into the app. Now you can see we're connected to our Ecovacs vacuum right here within our Wi-Fi settings. We also got a prompt letting us know we were connected and we need to go back into the app. Now you can see we're back in the app and it's letting us know that it's connecting the robot to our phone. We're at 51% already and now we're gonna let it finish. There we go, you can see everything's all set up. Now it's time for us to name our RoboVac. So go ahead, enter name, and then select next. Next, we're at a setup screen where we can choose the voice language, select enter. And now you can see we have our True Detect 3D. So check that out, pretty cool graphic. They're showing you the obstacles that it can avoid. And now we have the start now prompt you can select. Next up, you can see we have the ability to turn on continuous cleaning, which I highly recommend. So go ahead, select that. The vacuum even chimed for us. Then we can select next. Now you can see we have a do not disturb mode. If we want to set that right there, we can turn that on. 
Next up, you can see once mapping is complete, advanced features such as area cleaning and custom cleaning will be unlocked. So now we need to create a map so we can sense our environment to give us that best clean. Now they're gonna walk you through some quick preparations before you begin mapping. Make sure to tidy up your house, remove small objects, open the doors to the rooms you want it to clean. Next, make sure the charging dock is all set up and ready to go, no obstacles, obstructions, and that it's properly clean. Then we have our last reminders here, not to disturb or mess up the RoboVac while it's in the mapping process. So once all three of those are all set and ready to go, you can select the start. And now you can see the vacuum's going to start cleaning. But in this case, I don't wanna map this tiny table. So with that being said, let's just go back into the app now. We'll look at a couple more features before we let it map the house. So this is the screen you'll be at once your vacuum is set up within the app. You can see we have some quick settings right here. We can do auto clean, set it home to recharge or enter into our smart cleaning menu. You also may notice we can see currently it's online 98% for our battery life. Then we can select the name of our vacuum. We can choose to share it. If we have anybody else's Ecovacs home account email address, we can share it with them. We can also rename the robot and delete the robot right here. Let's enter into smart cleaning again. Once we have the map set up, you'll be able to see a nice mapped area where you can choose a custom clean. We can choose a specific area or room to clean. At the bottom, in the bottom right-hand corner, we can send it back home to recharge. Bottom left-hand corner, you can see we can save multiple floor maps. Really helpful if you plan to use this on maybe your first and second story or your basement, your first story, that sort of thing. You can do that right there. Then we have our cleaning preferences. So quickly, we can adjust the vacuum power from quiet all the way up to max plus and our water flow level from low all the way to ultra high. Then you can see entering in back into our smart cleaning mode, we have a nice cleaning history up here. So once we have some areas clean, this will start to populate for us. And then you can see in the top right-hand corner, we have all of our settings. So we can turn advanced mode on or off. We have our auto boost suction on or off. Basically, it will sense if it's over carpet and give you that max cleaning. Auto empty settings. We have scheduling right here. So we can add a new schedule. So you can see, choose the day or time, which days of the week you want it to repeat and what type. So we could also do an area clean once we have our map populated. We have our TrueDetect 3D obstacle avoidance. I would highly recommend turning that on. Then you can see continuous clean. So when enabled, this will automatically adjust the charging duration according to the unfinished workload and continue the unfinished cleaning tasks. Then you can see do not disturb. We can turn that on or off. Cleaning cloth reminder, we can turn that on or off. We can reset the current map. There's also additional settings right here, our cleaning log. You can see our accessory usage, which is nice so you know when it's time to maintain and replace parts and components of your vacuum. We have our voice settings right here. We can rename it, help, and then we have an about section. Now let's go ahead, let's let it map our house and do its first clean. Now you can see we have the vacuum cleaning right here on a nice hard floor surface. I also threw a couple of obstacles in its way so we can see how it responds. You may notice it just ran over the air vent, which is great. So it has no problem navigating and driving over an obstacle like that. You can see right now, currently it's doing a nice sweep of the perimeter as it gets used to the room, as it makes its map. And then it will clean back and forth in a logical cleaning pattern. So now you can see that logical navigation in action right here as it's moving back and forth row by row, making sure that it covers every square inch of your floor. It knows where it's at and gives you that nice and deep and thorough clean. Here we go, now we're approaching our cable. So you can see right there, the side brushes did hit it. Watch as it turns around. Let's see if it runs over it or if it's able to avoid it. So there we go, it sensed the cable right there and now it's working on moving away from it. So you can see it's trying to go around it. That's actually a lot better than I thought it would be because that cable's so low on the floor, usually a lot of times they can get overlooked. But you can see right here, it is sensing that cable still and moving around. Trying to go back, now it's turning the corner, doing a circle around it. And you can even see the side cleaning brushes are not spinning as fast. So thankfully, if we were to hit it, hopefully we wouldn't sweep it back up. 
But so far, so good. It passed the initial cable test right there. And now you can see it's continuing on with our clean, coming up to the pencil, and it just missed the pencil there. It did not see it, and it still hasn't seen it. And now it's running over it. But that's a really tough ask. Very small. Might blend into with the color of the floor a little bit to the sensor. But it does know something's nearby. You can see now it has recognized it and it's moving around it. So you can see it has identified it. And even with it moving it a couple inches out of the way, it does know where it is and it's continuing on with its clean. Now it's making its approach to the scissors. So you can see right here, it's definitely going slower. Ooh, just squeaked by it. Now we'll watch on the return if it's gonna make contact with it. It's back to the pencil. Okay, scratch that part. Now we're making our approach to the scissor. Now we're making our approach to the scissors right here so you can see it's approaching it very slowly. It does recognize them and it's making the proper adjustments. Now you can see the vacuum's equipped with cliff sensors, so check it out as it's navigating around. You can see it came to the top of the landing and it's prohibiting itself from driving any further to fall off the steps. So the sensors are working just as you would expect. Now you can see the vacuum cleaning on carpet right here. It's working great. It has no issues at all moving around freely on the carpet, whether you're using the max plus suction setting that you see right here, or if we turn it down to the quiet setting it's gonna not have any issues at all moving back and forth. Pay attention too to the navigational pattern. Again, it's gonna go in your row by row navigation, leaving you those nice cleaning lines on your floor. Now you can see we got the mopping module attached to the RoboVac. Check it out, you can see the floor to the right side has been mopped. Keep in mind this mop is really the equivalent to just using a wet paper towel and wiping your floor. Make sure you get the pad nice and wet before you start using it. I would recommend using the maximum water setting because the pad will continue to dry out over time. So keep that in mind too. The dirtiest area that you want to get the best clean with the mop, make sure you start the RoboVac there while the pad's the wettest. When your vacuum finishes cleaning, it will return home to charge and empty itself automatically. So you can see it's found the charging base right here. It's lining up to make its final approach to drive up, charge, and empty. So you can see that happening in real time right here. It has no issues at all being able to find the base around your house, whatever room it's in. And you can see it has no issues getting up on the base to charge and empty. So it'll also give us a prompt here in a second, letting us know that it's charging as well as when it's... So there you go, you just heard it, starting charging, and then it'll also empty itself automatically. So you can hear that right there, emptying dustbin, and now it's gonna start.
You can see it's super powerful, takes around 20 seconds to empty all the contents in the dustbin. Now let's look at the vacuum cleaner and see how it's held up after a couple of cleans. So first thing we're gonna look at is the dustbin. Obviously, you'll open this up and it'll be empty because it has a self-emptying base. But I thought we'd still look to see some of the dust that is, you know, collecting around it as you would expect. But I also wanted to show you the air filter is already dirty as well. So we're already collecting a lot of dirt and dust in this unit, as you would expect. But look at how fine a particles it's able to trap in this filter. So this vacuum not only can handle larger objects to vacuum up sticks, dirt, food crumbs, that sort of thing, obviously pet hair, but really fine dirt and dust as well will get trapped in this vacuum, which is great. You don't want to be breathing that in at all. And that is a filter that we can clean as well, which I highly recommend staying up on top of that cleaning and maintenance. You can see looking at the front of it, we obviously have some hairs that have collected, some dust. We also have cobwebs. We have just really fine pieces of dirt as well on there. So it's really kicking up a lot too as it's going around your house cleaning. We can flip it over and you can see the main brush roller right here. No tangles or anything yet. That'll just vary depending on how often it's run. Do you have a lot of long haired individuals or pets in your house? But it's really easy to clean. We also have dirt and dust already on it, which makes sense. You can see a little bit of dirt and dust collecting right here where it's going to suck the contents out. And then lastly, I thought I'd show you the mopping module. If you can see that on camera, it is discolored already, not because it's wet, but because it's dirty. So it is doing a good job wiping up some dirt around the house. But again, this isn't gonna be scrubbing or anything like that. It's really just the equivalent of a wet paper towel gliding across the floor. But you can see it will make a difference and it will get that dirt up for you from the floor. Now that we finished cleaning, let's go back into the mobile app so you can see we can enter our smart cleaning. This is gonna show us the last clean and our nice detailed map right here. It ran for an hour, 667 square feet. You can see the map and layout here of our space. It did a fantastic job, super accurate. So check that out. You can see too how it's gonna navigate row by row back and forth right there, the really cool cleaning pattern. I found it interesting. There's a lot of diagonal lines made in each room. You can see how it drives across diagonally right here. Thought that was really unique. You might be wondering too, as you're looking at this, why it didn't clean this bottom section of B right there. That's because that's a staircase. So you can see it prevented itself from driving any further, yet it's still able to see further out and map the staircase right there, which I think is really impressive. Now let's go ahead, let's look at our cleaning history. So here's the cleaning log that we have so far. You can see almost 2,500 square feet clean for our area, nine times, three hours, 47 minutes for our duration. A lot of these cleans were just me trying out different features, sampling the vacuum. It took two full cleans to create the map for us as well. And the cleaning log is just right here in the front. You can just select the previous metrics and that'll bring you into the log. Now let's go ahead, let's look at some more of the map features. So let's select the icon in the bottom left-hand corner. Clicking that icon brings us back to our map management section where you can see we have our first map saved right here that's currently in use and we can edit the name if we want. So main floor, second floor, basement, that sort of thing. And you can see we have one additional map that we can add. Going back out, you can see we have a couple of more features that now make a little bit more sense to us that we can look at. The first one is the custom setting right here. So now we can just choose an area on the map that we want the vacuum to clean just by doing the custom section. And again, you can resize that as well. So you can see that right there. Then we also have our area option. This is really cool. So you can see the different areas. This was all automatically created for us. I didn't do anything to create these areas but you can see how we have them right here. And again, we could just choose one and it's gonna start cleaning that area. If we go ahead and hit the big blue button right there, you could select multiple areas, right? Maybe you want all the rooms but one cleaned, you could do that. So really cool that now we have a couple more options to clean in addition to just the regular auto mode. Now you might be wondering, hey David, I thought there's the ability to add no-go zones, virtual walls, that sort of thing, and you are correct. So let's go ahead. Let's go back into our map management. We're gonna choose the map that's active and in use. 
we can select that and now you can see we have different options here right we can delete the map we can label the areas right if you don't like how it auto populated things you can relabel it right here we can edit the areas too. say for instance a and e are actually the same room we can merge or divide the areas so they walk you through how to do that step by step so you have both options there or again you have one room that's too big and it's supposed to be two different rooms. You can edit that. I didn't have any issues. This nailed it on the first go around with the map, which is what I tend to expect with LiDAR vacuums. They're just superior in their navigation, at least in my opinion. Then you can see we have our virtual boundaries right here. So this is where we can set our no-go zones, right? So we could do a pretty big barrier right here if we wanted, right? We could do a virtual boundary and we could just select the area that we want right? We don't want to do this whole room. Maybe it's the holiday season. You have a Christmas tree and your RoboVac tends to get caught on the Christmas tree skirt. If you have one, you could do it just like you see right there. Or say you have a carpeted area. You don't want it to mop maybe a rug, things like that. Then you can go ahead, select no mop zone and just draw the borders again. So say this room, you know, we don't want the no mop zone there. Let's go ahead. Let's do that again. This is a bedroom as well, let's say. So we don't want it to mop there either. And then I wanna go back to the virtual boundary. So again, we can do a box or a line. So here's kind of a virtual wall. You could just draw a line. You never want it to, I don't know. We could have some fun here, I guess. Just, you know, never want to go. Here, let's do that again in this area. I don't know. I don't know why you do that, but you could. You could set that up right there. But I like the wall tool. It's great if there's just a certain area around the house that you want to create a line, draw a line, or use a box to keep the vacuum out. You can make all those changes right there, and then you can see our map saves that information for the vacuum. You might be wondering, hey, what's this little Wi-Fi indicator icon box thing right there? Let's select that, and you can see we actually have a signal strength map. This is really cool. Not sure how accurate it is, but you do have a nice visual indicator to at least see how the vacuum sensing signal strength around the house. So you can see where our router is located. So you'd expect it to have blue everywhere. This also shows a gray box with lines through it as the uncovered area. So I'm not sure if those rooms are truly uncovered or just low signal strength, but I'd actually expect them to show up as blue given the router that we have here and how close it is in proximity to those rooms. It's really not that far away, but it's still cool that we have a nice visual indicator. And I do want to point out, we haven't had any Wi-Fi or connection issues at all whatsoever. Now back within the app and our map settings, you can see we now have an empty dustbin option as well. So if for some reason it pulls up onto the charging base and it doesn't empty itself and you want to empty it, you can go ahead and you can select that option right there. And you can see it's automatically emptying the dustbin for us right now. And it's very responsive. So it's doing a good job. I can actually hear it in the other room emptying right now. So you can do that right from your phone. Now towards the center of the left-hand side of the screen, you can see we have a cleaning sequence icon. This is cool. So we can set the cleaning sequence that we desire. So say we want A first, then E, then D, then let's do C and then B. We can set that right there within the app. Now it's time for my final thoughts. I've used quite a few RoboVacs on the market today, and I gotta say there's a couple essentials you should always consider regardless of brand. Obviously your budget, but make sure you're getting one with LiDAR navigation if you can and a self-emptying base, because the whole point of a RoboVac is for you to not have to vacuum, and having that self-emptying base now prolongs you even further until you have to interact with your vacuum. So I really love having that feature, and it's definitely an essential in my opinion if you can afford it, but I know not everybody can. But having the LiDAR navigation is amazing because we get that great mobile app experience, as you can see in this video, where we can set no mop zones, no go zones, virtual walls, and barriers. I really like everything that this vacuum is equipped with. The True Detect 3D Vision is great too. Highly recommend getting one if you can that has that sensor. It's better than not having it, but it's never going to be perfect. So just keep that in mind. But with software upgrades, firmware updates, they can continue to use that AI and make it more and more accurate, which is really, really exciting. Now, 
With all that being said, let's talk about the mopping module. So I use a lot of Robovacs like this that come with a similar module and they all provide just about the same experience. For me personally, I wish they would get wetter. That's what I'd like to see out of this particular unit as well. They just never get wet enough and they typically dry out after they're driving around your house. So I highly recommend getting it wet, using the maximum water setting that's available and put it in the area where you feel like it's dirtiest, you wanna make sure it gets the cleanest. But again, there's no scrubbing, there's no solution there. So it's really just that wet, damp rag just kind of going across the floor. It will pick up dirt and stuff, but again, it's not gonna replace you actually having to mop. I also wanna point out with the mopping pad installed, this vacuum would not go in the bedrooms with the carpet. I'm not sure if that's a software limitation, even though I didn't set up the no mopping zone in those rooms. I think maybe for some reason, when it encounters the carpet from the hard floor and it knows that it has the mopping module installed, it's smart enough or there's enough resistance that it chooses not to go into those rooms to clean. But I'm not sure what is truly the cause, but that's just my guess as to why that's the case. Now, I found that interesting because I've used other Robovacs that also have a very similar looking design and mop attachment, and they've never had that issue. So this is a great vacuum overall if you're looking for a Robovac and you're on a budget, but you still wanna have some of those premium features. This is definitely a vacuum that you should check out and investigate. I also wanna mention that if budget isn't so much of an issue and you want the best of the best, Ecovax makes the Omni X1, and that's a fantastic Robovac that builds upon the success and the features of this particular unit. So it gives you a mopping module that actually rotates the mopping pads for you. It can self-empty and self-clean the mopping pads, and it can refill the water tank for you, which is really cool. And my favorite feature hands down in a Robovac is in that vacuum where it uses the 3D vision. It has cameras as well that can capture photos and videos for you as it's going around the house. And you can even put it in a specific mode where it acts like a security patrol for you going and checking on each individual room in your house and you can watch it in real time.